Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be taking a look at a potential client's email because there is many things for my novice guys out there or guys not familiar with the electronics they're working with with a CNC robot that need to hear in this video when dealing with a VFD or a spindle from a so-called professional manufacturer in terms of kits that they're offering uh, and assembled spindle cables. So what you have before you is a snippet of the email that I actually received. Uh, naturally, uh, I've removed any information that would identify the company that this, this uh, potential client was talking about. But rest assured, guys, they are popping up everywhere. It's like whack-a-mole. Um, unfortunately, you guys have to do the due diligence. I don't have to shop because I know what's out there. I want you guys to shop, and I'm about to show you the difference that in this case is really drastic because it really puts a lot of people in harm's way in the fact that the research was not done <coughs> in the cables this person is offering. Uh, I just want to point your attention to number two here. It says, later I plan on upgrading to a 2.2K water-cooled spindle and was looking at the blank, mostly because it's turnkey and provided support. They recently blank with uh, some connector upgrades and their spindle control cables are shielded and look good to me. Now, I, I do have to laugh at when he says shielded, but anyways, however, after seeing your spindle and VFD power cables, I may go a different direction and use your cables instead. <clears throat> now, I want to clarify by reading my response. My responses are in bold. Well, I can't speak of a website that was just created, but after reviewing the person's YouTube channel, I can certainly tell you the cable they were using is incorrect for Spindle's application, as they're using an 18-gauge, 80-degree Celsius temperated version. <clears throat> Here's my listing for my DS flexion cable, and as you review it carefully, you'll see the amperage corrective factor formula for when the cable is using multiple conductors. I provided the link. If this person is using an 18 gauge cable, it's rated to 15 amps maximum at 80 degrees Celsius casing lead temperature rating. When you then factor in the corrective factor for multiple conductors, you now have a 12 amp rated cable. All VFDs, regardless of their input voltage, 110 and 220 output three phase power. This means the VFD intakes single phase power and converts it to three phase, which translates to a much larger output. Now guys, I'm telling you right now, pay attention to this. It's only two minutes into this video, and we're going to cover in direct detail what is going on. And this is really, really scary. I even provided uh, links here for this person to do their own review. But let's cover some details. Okay, so here's the cable in question uh, that this person is selling. Uh, once again, let's look at some details here. We've got 18 gauge, 80 degrees Celsius temperated, 300 volt cable. It appears to be a flex drag cable by Yisheng Pai. Uh, if we look closely, this is where things get fun. We look closely. You got part number SP483. Well, first of all, I want to identify that this cable, without a doubt, is a knockoff of mine. And the reason I call it a knockoff is because he's trying to do what I do on my cables by mimicking and attaching a shield drain lead going once again to the ground lead, which is probably the, the best thing he did here so far, is doing that. Once again, where he miserably fails is that we have spade connectors being used. And why we don't use spade connectors is they simply slide in and out. And for a three-phase application, that means, God forbid, that robot tugs that cable a little tight, it can pull this spade connector out and you have a loose conductor flying around inside your VFD. And believe me, I've seen this before, not with spade connectors, thank God, in this application, but many other type connectors. So I'm telling you, proceed with extreme caution. But where it gets really scary is, once again, I want to point your eyes to SP483 part number. And we'll clarify again, 18 gauge, 80 degrees Celsius temp rated, 300 volt. So I come over here, and we can see here, I've got the specs of the cable. Now, how did I get that? Very simple. Just like many of you can get it, I went and I actually contacted the vendor. I have a question. Is part number SP483 double shielded cable? What specs? He gives me part numbers. I say, thank you. It appears this cable is only single shielded. Yes? Yes. Only tin copper braided. Well, we already know, if any of you watch my channel for any length of time, you understand that two levels of shielding is optimal and is mandatory for VFD cables. And why that is, is we have two 
uh, differentiating frequencies of EMI. We have high and low frequency. VFDs are most susceptible uh, at producing large amounts of the EMI. And what we want to do is make sure that we're not letting it escape. Okay, so again, when we use two forms of actual shielding, we're trying to make sure that it's condensed and it's minimal at best. And again, we're, you're never going to totally eliminate it, but we're trying to mitigate it as much as possible. This is best practice, and this must be done. Now, if we look over here once again, and I want to draw your attentions to it, rated temperature, 80 degrees Celsius, rated voltage, 300 volt. Isheng Pi Flex Drag Cable Shielding 2464, uh, 80 degrees Celsius, 300 volt, part number SP483. Okay, this is his cable. I spoke to the manufacturer, unless he had this custom built, which I highly doubt, he probably just picked a cable and went from there. But if he had it custom built, and even if he had it double shielded, we have another issue. And this is a drastic safety issue. See, the EMI issue is one that will just lead to a robot being unstable or potentially being unstable. What I'm about to show you now, and anyone who's purchased this cable, if it was me, I would be angry because I'm going to show you something that is really what I feel to be uh, just a lack of understanding of what this person's actually selling. So we're going to come over here. And I brought up my cables listing, and I want to show the price on my cable. Okay, my 20 foot, and this is including the connector and completely built, is 270 with shipping. Okay, I'm not trying to hide anything, I'm trying to show you exactly the difference. You can see that the cable is treated with deoxy. You can see that my cable is rated to 600 volt, 105 degrees Celsius. Now, my uh, my non-DS flexion cable is rated to 300 volt, but once again is still rated to 105 degrees Celsius on the exterior uh, casing. And I want to show you why this is. And I'm showing you exactly in detail the listing that you would see if you were to purchase from me. This way there's no games, guys. You know exactly what you're getting. Once again, my cables are built with Kester 186 flux and Kester number 44 solder. Now, once again, I can tell you he knocked off my cables because here's the way the ring connector should look. And again, they are soldered. And you can see level. And we can see that we have the shield drain extension here. And why we use ring connectors is when that screw goes through that ring, and I've said this in previous videos, it locks. It's welded on where the ring connector is in terms of that ring connector is welded to these leads. Once that screw goes through the center ring, the cable would be literally destroyed before one of these will pull out. That is the ultimate goal here. Safety. I come down, I show you guys the videos. Actually, before you purchase, here's a breakdown of the internal structure of the cable. But as we come down, and I hope many of you read this, there's an amp chart. And it says lead wire current carrying capacity, or also known as ampacity. I want to draw your attention there. You can see it says 16 gauge, and you can see here it says conductor rating, in, or excuse me, insulated conductor temperature rating at 105 degrees Celsius. You can see it says 26. If we look at this gentleman's cable, we see that his uh, AWG size at 18 gauge, and we look at 80 degrees Celsius temp rating, we are looking at a 15 amp rating. Okay? Here's where it gets interesting. If we scroll down, you see here, multiply the ampacity rating from the above by a correction factor listed below to determine the ampacity rating of a conductor in a multi-conductor cable. Now, this is interesting. It's a great formula for you guys to know. So let's do some math real quick. Okay? If we take 15, what that cable he's using is, is actually rated for in, in amps maximum-wise, and we multiply by 0.8, we are at 12 amps, guys. 12 amps amps. Now, my cable's rated to 20.8 because it's 16 gauge. It's 16 gauge, guys. Now, what does that mean to you as a novice? This all might be Greek. You know, you just want to know what we all want to know. What cable do I need? And that's why you contact the right person for the right job. Let's do it. Here we go. I'm on Amazon just like many of you would be. Here's an HYVFD. Let's scroll down. Let's scroll down. And let's pay attention to some details. This is where it gets interesting. A 2.2K 110 volt VFD rated current is 20 amps. A 2.2K 220 volt VFD, same VFD as far as output, that 2200 watts, but we're 
intaking a different voltage. So again, we're single phase input at 110, we're single phase input at 220. Uh, you can see the efficiency here because it's dropping by half because again, we are increasing our voltage. And you can see here we're at 10 amps here and we're at 20 amps here. Well, we already know his cable is only good for 12 amps. So what do you think? How safe do you feel running that equipment that he self-proclaimed uh, is having branded? He's having his VFDs branded in his own name. And what's really interesting, because I get guys that ask me this question too, is that he's running 2.2K VFDs and 1.5K VFDs, which are all over the place. Whether they're 110 or 220, if his VFDs are outputting the same power as an HY, which they should if the rating is the same, it's irrelevant what name's on it, then what you see here on current is accurate. That means he's incorrectly matched a cable. Now, technically speaking, this is just me speaking because I get guys that will say that all the time. Well, it's just your opinion. Okay, let's see if it's just my opinion. Now I'm going to direct your attention to Multi-Cable Corporation, who also manufactures cables. Let's go down this path. Conductor size, uh, these major determining factors are conductor size, ambient temperature, conductor number, installation conditions. Now, let's look right here. The chart shows the current required to raise the temperature of a single insulated conductor in free air, 30 degrees Celsius ambient, to the limits of various insulation types. The following table gives a derating factor to be used when the conductors are bundled. These charts, you can see this is in bold type, should only be used as a guide when attempting to establish current ratings on conductor and cable. What's interesting is it matches what my cable was. It matches the grid at point 0.8 for four to six conductors. And if we come over here again, we can see it right here, point 0.8. This is two to five. So it's close. You know, we see the charts close. It's not exact. It's supposed to be a ballpark, right? This company manufactures cable, right? So let's scroll down. Here's the 16 gauge. And you can see I'm at 24 amps at 105 degrees Celsius, and this is using polyvinyl chloride, also known as PVC, okay, as far as the insulation. And you can see we're at 105 degrees Celsius. When we come down to 18, we are once again at 15 at 80 degrees Celsius. So the math has already been done, gentlemen. You can see these essentially match the exact same thing from here to what I have here. Okay, actually, mine is two amps higher on this chart, and this one is what? What are we at? 24? 24. So we're very, very, very close. Okay, he is not. He is actually the same, and this is really interesting because if we look at this, it's at 15 here, 0.8 for the correction factor, and if we look at it here, we are at 15, and again, if we use a corrective factor they have listed, once again, it puts us at that horrible number at 12. So his cables are rated maximum, maximum at 12 amps, guys. Be careful of what you're buying, okay? I've done my homework many years ago. I'm telling you right now, there's a reason, there is a reason that you get what you pay for, okay? And when I say you get what you pay for, let's, let's just look at something here, okay? Let's just click. Here you go, positive feedback, 100%. You don't believe that? Let's come in here. Here we go, 7,800 items sold, 1,300 followers, 100% positive feedback. I'm going to bring up a logical question that I ask all of you. If you see a new product that's out and somebody is selling it on their own website, I want you to think logically why they would be selling on their own website and not eBay or Amazon where it's offered to the masses where you guys can be the judge directly and why are they trying to control all of their sales each one and up to the point that basically they can select what payment methods they use right down to who gets to see their website by where they send their links think about what I'm saying if you're truly starting a business your ultimate goal is to make as most sales as possible right Right. So you would use venues that you don't have to recreate the wheel. Think logically. I would list on Amazon or eBay before I would ever list on my own website because I have to pay to advertise my own website to hopefully reach you. So isn't that a red flag? 
Doesn't that sound a little odd that I would make it to where I'm basically in control of my own sales and how I can control the entire game as far as what products I provide you? Think about what I'm saying. Think. Because the proof is right here. The proof is right here. Here's a Boeing invoice. That's who I've sold to. Okay, This is an actual Boeing invoice. Anyone who wants it can contact me and you can see one of my past clients is Boeing. I'm telling you guys, you have to be careful. And once again, I think I've made my point very clear. Looking at this, and this is on Amazon, you guys can all see this, rated currents. Uh, once again, he's not selling 3 or 4K uh, VFDs, so you don't have to worry about that. But you do have to worry about what VFDs he is selling with his branded name. And he's got a whole bunch of other stuff on his site. And, I mean, it goes from – it's kind of random, actually. It goes from, like, him selling – uh, VFD kits, which actually come um, bundled with Skittles. I'm not exaggerating this. This is fact, as funny as it may sound. But what I'm seeing here is treacherous. And I'm telling you right now, when I'm hearing about these guys, and it seems like they all like to stay on Facebook. Like Facebook seems to be the area where these guys like to sell and come up with stuff. And I, I, I don't know if it's a manipulating thing where they think that they're safe that way because, you know, it's not going to trickle out. Eventually it's going to trickle out and somebody's going to see it and point out that, oh, my God, what are you doing? Because something like this where I see this and you can't hide it and this is what he's selling. And by the way, when we judge my price, because I know a lot of guys are doing that, keep in mind that his cables sell depending on the connectors, up to $190 a piece. So compare the two, guys. Compare the two. And, and mind you, I'm building my cables. You know who built your cable. You don't know who built this. So be careful. I hope the video has been helpful. And honestly, the one thing I'm most passionate about is safety. Everyone deserves to be safe, and that includes your family, and that's most important. So be careful.